The third piece to our DHCP snooping puzzle is to use IP source guard. When IP source guard is enabled, all traffic to the interface is blocked apart from DHCP packets. An IP source guard examines each packet sent from a host attached to an untrusted access interface on the switch for the correct IP address, MAC address and the VLAN against entries stored in the DHCP snooping database. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing as 86% of viewers aren't currently subscribed. So in our example, once user X gets their IP address through DHCP, only that IP address, which has been allocated via DHCP or a statically configured IP to MAC address binding will be allowed through that interface. This will prevent our previous scenario of user X binding their MAC address to user B's IP address. Now I know this is only theory, but let's take a look at the syntax of an EX switch in case that comes up on the lab. So looking at this configuration, we see that secure access port, this is to apply port security features to the specified interface. Then we name the interface. Then we have either no DHCP trusted or DHCP trusted to see if the interface is trusted or not. This is the VLAN configuration which VLAN the port security feature will be applied to. Examine DHCP. This is to enable DHCP snooping on the specified VLAN. And we could enable it for all the VLANs as well. ARP inspection to perform dynamic ARP inspection for this VLAN. And also IP source guard, which will configure the IP source guard feature for this interface. And don't forget to commit the configuration. Now remember that any layer 2 interface that is an access port is untrusted by default and any trunk port is trusted by default. In a previous video I said that DHCP snooping doesn't work with the VQFX platform. That was only a half truth. You can actually put the commands in but they don't actually work exactly the way I expect. Now I'm not sure if that's just because it's a virtual platform. But let me run those actual commands and show you. And if anyone's like, oh, actually, you've done this a bit wrong. All you need to do is dot, dot, dot. Then just jump over to our blog at www.routercoach.com and um, write a comment there. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. All right, so let's run those commands on the VQFX platform so that at least anybody who's interested can see that alternative way of running DHCP snooping on this platform. I have the QFX, this is QFX. And I think all I need to do, show interface XE004.0. Previously, okay, so I don't even have the firewall filter on this. I must have rolled that back. So we just have a clear configuration. What we're going to do is we're going to look to see if we could get DHCP snooping running even if it's just in part on this and the way to do this we need to do this under the vlan forwarding options so set vlan default and we're going to say for the forwarding options we're going to use dhcp security and the first thing they're going to do well i'm going to question mark and see what we could do we can see that we can run the ARP inspection command and both the IP source guard here. ARP inspection, that will be for the whole VLAN. Oh, and on the same line, we could say IP source guard. They're the two commands that we want. Now that's for that VLAN, but Okay, what we also want to do, I, I don't actually know how to do this one properly. So let me say edit VLAN for the default VLAN. Um, forwarding options, I do know how to do this. DHCP security. What I'm going to say is we're going to set the group. We're going to call it trusted. And the reason that we're saying this is because we know that access ports by default are untrusted. So we're going to override the default and we're going to make that trusted. And which interfaces are going to be trusted? Now I'm going to make the interface going over to the D8, trusted DHCP server. 
which is interface XE003.0 and over to user A, which is XE001. Excellent. And what I'm going to also do, I'm going to set a static IP address just so that we can see the difference. And that for the static is going to be called static IP. No, um, let's make that a bit capital, static. Static binding. I'm going to say for interface going down to user B, which is XE002.0, we're going to give it a static IP, and that's why I changed the name of it, because we didn't want to get to any confusion. We're going to give it an IP address of 192.168.0.12, and the MAC address we're going to give it is 11223344. Zero zero dot zero zero colon zero zero. Excellent. Let's have a look at that configuration. Right, it's quite a lot of configuration that we've got there. But we can see that when we run DHCP security for this VLAND, that will enable DHCP snooping. We've got the ARP inspection, we've got IP source guard. We're going to override the default configuration of the interfaces, of um, which means that for any interfaces under the trusted group, they're going to be trusted interfaces. And we've also got a static group binding for XE002, which gives an IP address of 192.168.0.12, which is mapped to the MAC address of 11.20. 11 colon 22 colon 33 colon 44 colon 00 colon 00. Let's see if that command, that configuration actually works. Which it does. Let's commit that. Now, the next part is the part I don't think actually works too well um, on the VQFX platform. So I'm going to enable the DHCP server. Before I do that, let me just jump over to user A. And we can see that we don't have any IP addresses at the moment. It's a Cisco, so this might take a bit of time now because it's looking for a domain server. It's looking for a domain name of edit and um, there is no domain name of edit. I meant to put enable, but because I'm running on Juniper, edit is in my mind. Okay, enable, it's done now. Interface G00. No shut. We're bringing up that interface. We could actually bring up the spoofed one as well. So let me just do that now. Normal DHCP server, and I've brought up the spoofed DHCP server. And if I run commit, which I've done here, we shouldn't be able to get an IP address from the spoofed DHCP server. Let's see what happens. But we do. This is the IP address on the spoofed DHCP server. So let's jump back onto our QFX switch. We're learning all the IP addresses that we should. Now, if we're doing the DHCP configuration on the QFX, we need to run show DHCP security binding and we can see that we've only got a binding for the the static address that I put in so if I run on to user B now and this is also getting an address from the rogue DHCP server. So from my point of view, the ARP inspection and the IP source guard has not worked. 
Let's try and check out the ARP inspection. No, so I don't think those have worked at all. So what I will do, I will turn off the spoofed DHCP server and then we'll try it again. Let's just shut down this interface. We're gonna shut down this interface. We're gonna release the lease and then renew it. And now we should get an IP address. And again, this has not given me the static IP address I want. And let's just do it for completion on user A's interface. And it's user A that gets 0 0.12 instead. So as I said, only half of the commands work the way expected, but these are the commands that we would need to run DHCP snooping on the VQFX platform. I hope you enjoyed this lab and let's move on to the next one. It's question time. Question one. What is the primary purpose of Juniper IP source guard in a network? A, to prevent unauthorized devices from sending IP packets based on their source IP addresses. B, to enhance network performance by prioritizing traffic based on source IP addresses. C, to facilitate seamless communication between devices in different subnets. D, to encrypt all incoming and outgoing IP traffic for enhanced security. The answer is A. Question 2. Which security feature does Juniper IP Source Guard primarily focus on? A. Port-based authentication. B. Filtering traffic based on destination MAC addresses. C. Restricting traffic based on source IP addresses. D. Implementing VPN tunnels for secure communication. The answer is C. To get the complete question banks for all the JNCISENT videos, drop us an email at info at